Hi, my name is Amy Holcomb. I'm the Experiential Learning Supervisor at the Skokie Public Library. And today I'm joining you from home to show you how to make one of our activities on this week's Boombox at Home blog post about measurement. So I don't know if you've noticed, but we've had a lot of rain lately, um, even some snow. And one thing we can do is to make a rain gauge to measure how much rainfall we're actually getting. And I guess as the saying goes, April showers bring May flowers. Maybe, maybe it's April snow showers, I'm not quite sure. But a rain gauge is a simple tool that you can make with everyday objects that you probably have around home. So I'm following a guide from the public lab and the first step in this guide in making your own rain gauge is to gather all your supplies. So you'll need a soda pop bottle, a plastic one, so preferably a two liter one. If you don't have that, um, this type of plastic bottle will do well too. You just want a little bit bigger of an object to work with. You'll need a permanent marker, a cutting tool, so I'm using a utility knife, or scissors will do, a tape measure or ruler. I have a tape measure from the toolbox, some duct tape or electrical tape, and I've already pre-made strips so they're ready to go, and a measuring cup with some water, and optionally you can have gravel or some stones and even binder clips. So the first step in making our rain gauge is to prepare our bottle. We want to make sure that it's clean, that it's, it doesn't have to be dry necessarily, but you definitely don't want any remnants of what was originally in there still in there. So clean it out really well. And then we're going to cut our bottle into two pieces. So we want this bottom portion separated from this top portion. And if you look, there's actually a nice line here, which will help us um, in making um, a line of our circumference or around the bottle so that we have the cylinder part down below. So you can use your marker to draw a line. Um, so I'm holding mine and I'm just going to carefully turn the bottle away from me while I make this line. And really you don't need to draw it if your bottle already has a nice line on it, but it's a good reminder of where you'll be cutting. So I'm gonna finish that. You can see my line is all the way around. Next, I'm gonna get my cutting tool. If you're using um, a utility knife, or even if you're using scissors, you probably want a grown-up to help you out with this because plastic can be a little tricky to cut and the cut line will be um, pretty rough, so you don't want to hurt yourself. Um, so you'll have an, a, an adult help you with this part, but you're going to pierce part of that line and then you'll slowly cut around it. Um, it's always a good idea to cut away from you. I'm not doing that right now but I'm gonna carefully cut this off camera and make it a little bit of noise. Um, obviously the sharper the blade, the easier this might be because plastic bottles have less plastic now. Um, they're actually pretty flimsy and a little bit harder to cut. But I did it. So here's the top part and here's the bottom part. And you can see this is more of a cylindrical shape and this is more of a funnel shape. So we want to place the funnel shape on top of the cylindrical bottom part and try to get a nice fit. So I'm going to shove it down there a little bit. So it's pretty tight. I do have a little bit of a gap. So now to make it a little bit more secure, I'm going to get my duct tape strips and Try to secure it around. So I'm going to put the tape on the inside and then fold it over. There we go. So I'll do it on the other side just to have a good seal and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. So fold it over like this. So it's not beautiful but it's functional. So my bottle has 
and cut, and I've inverted the top part into the bottom part and secured it. The next step is to help with the calibration of your bottle or having like a zero point. So as you can see, this bottle has some curves on the bottom and a dip. So I'm gonna actually look at this line right here and use that as my zero mark. So I'm gonna get my marker and just draw a line there and do zero. And then I'm gonna get my tape measure ready and I'm gonna pull it out to about five inches. So this has inches and you can see the quarter and half inch lines pretty well. And I'm gonna transfer that onto my bottle and make a scale. So kind of like this, if you have a ruler, it's a little, probably a little bit easier um, to make it easier for me. I'm actually gonna just pull this and have it start at the six and go backwards. So I'm gonna use my marker and I'll first do inches and then I'm gonna make lines for the quarter and half inch and make sure I label it. So we have one here, one here, one here, and one here. One, two, three, four. And then I'll go do my half inch and mark that. And it's a little tight, so I'm actually not gonna do quarter inches, but here's roughly my scale. You can kind of see it. And that'll work just fine. So we do have a zero mark, but we have to do one more step in the calibration, and that's to fill up to the zero mark, either with gravel and water, gravel or stones, or just straight up water. So since I don't have any gravel or stones available, I'm gonna take my measuring cup with water and pour it in until I get to that zero mark. And that looks good. And now my rain gauge is ready to go outside and collect actual rainwater. So I'm gonna put mine on my balcony. I'm in a building and I live on the second floor, which is the top floor, and have a balcony. So it'll be open, uh, meaning it won't, this won't be covered and it'll be able to collect all the rain that comes down and maybe some more snow, who knows. But it's a not super weighted, even with the water. So I'm actually gonna probably duct tape it to a railing. Um, if you have a backyard, you can bury it a little bit in the ground or you can weigh it down with some rocks, um, but wind may knock it over and then your recordings won't be as accurate. So I'm gonna put mine on my balcony and then after each rainfall, I'm gonna go outside onto the balcony and take note of how much rain it collected. Um, so I'll use that scale on the side and try to be as accurate as I can. Um, I recommend writing down your rainfall in either a science journal, loose leaf paper, an electronic document, whatever you want to keep track. But over time, you'll be able to see your weather patterns. And if you really want to take it up a notch, you can make note of the time of the rain shower, the duration or how long it lasted, the intensity. Was it a light sprinkle? Was it a downpour? Um, you can make note of the temperature, the wind speed, the wind direction. And then you have this full weather report for you to reflect back on and even maybe make a cool graph over time. So I hope you're inspired to make your own rain gauge today. Thank you for joining me. And as we say in the boom box, what will you learn today?